Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you to the ICFJ for this award and, and for being on the side of the angels. I, I feel humbled and I especially want to salute Rose and Stefan, my colleagues uh, who don't work with the support of a big American news organization behind them. I, I salute your courage. I have to say that I share this award with all the men and the women who've been my partners behind the camera through thick and thin over nearly three decades. It really has been such a privilege to travel the world, to watch and listen and be paid to probe, and then to try to deliver stories that reflect the truth, or at least as close to the truth as we can get. I'm so grateful to the news organizations, especially my current employer, CBS News, for believing that I was up to the job. Thank you for the plane tickets. Thank you for the reality checks at times, for the encouragement, for the editorial backup, and most of all, for putting my stories on the air. Every trip I've made one way or another has reinforced my reverence for the beauty of this world. And I have to say, I have encouraged human courage and compassion in every corner of the planet. What have I learned? Well, there are some universals. People with power don't give it up willingly, except the very rarest among them. The price of war is always greater than those who start wars pretend at the outset. A corrupt state can never deliver justice. We all love our children, and women's washrooms are always cleaner than men's. <laughs> oh, across the world. I'm often asked what it's like to come under fire. Well, the short answer is it's bloody awful. But it isn't as terrifying as being caught in an air raid or being too close to a car bomb. I have survived all of these in pursuit of the story. And I would like to thank my long-suffering husband, who's here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And both my children, who over the years swallowed their worries and gave me unflagging support. They knew and they know that all of these things are occupational hazards. The job of an international reporter is to travel far away to events and then get really close to them, sometimes too close to figure out what's going on. And then once in possession of the facts to organize them into a coherent story. It is hard work. Truth is rarely simple. And there's never enough room, and this is for the CBS bosses in the audience, <laughs> there's never enough room in a TV newscast for foreign news. But strong international reporting is one of the most powerful weapons that we have to fight the dog whistle shorthand of populism. The rhetoric of politicians and interest groups who want to convince us that we, us, we are under a threat from them. And you will notice that the them are often conveniently from or in other countries. In fact, countries that somebody recently referred to as shithole countries. I'd like to tell you about a little uh, a reporting trip that has really stayed with me. It takes us back to October of 2012. I was on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan, where a Taliban gunman had shot up a school bus and almost killed a student. Could have been just another small story of an unlucky, brown-skinned girl from a poor family caught in a fallout from a war that at that stage people were tired of. It was entering its 10th year. 
It was messy, except that that girl was Malala Yousafzai. Local and foreign reporters began to dig and tell her story, and it turned out to be the story of a soft target who was tough as nails, a heroine who refused to give in to violence. I was one of the reporters who got to Malala's village about 48 hours after she was shot. She was airlifted to a hospital, but I made my way into the town and found her school. And you know that every desk was full in her classroom, except hers, this gaping, vacant spot. And the them of that community were really using it to make a stand. They decided that Malala's empty seat was not going to scare them. Instead, they made it a summons to fight ignorance with learning, a dedication to learning for the next generation of boys, but especially of girls. So who among us doesn't connect with that, that shining example? That's what good international reporting does. It knocks down walls. It introduces the us to the them. And it underlines the fact that all of us inhabit this blue bubble of a planet, which is currently in such distress. And that brings me to my closing point. The story of our age is climate change. It's about to elbow its way onto the news agenda in ways that we cannot even imagine. And by definition, it's a global story. It represents a huge and unique opportunity for international journalism, for fact-based stories that will literally be essential to our survival and with any luck will guide the way toward solutions and cooperation. I have no idea how that journalism is going to be shared or paid for, <laughs> but it will exist and it will be led by young reporters using the next generation of technology, reinventing, uh, reinventing the old craft I was trained for, fact-based reporting for a brand new age. For us, for them, for all of us together, the stakes could not be higher. Thank you very much. Thank you.